Hey there, it's Ben Housel here. In this class, we're gonna have a look at how we use the range selection tool. Now, this is really useful for selecting areas of your timeline or of your connected clips to remove them or to change the levels of the audio at that particular point in time. So we'll have a look at a couple different ways in which we can use the range selection tool for removing clips, but also for modifying audio levels as well. So the default tool that most people work with when they begin with Final Cut Pro um, is the selection tool. So that's the first tool in the list that comes up. Um, and then we have some other tools that we can work with, the trim, position, range selection tool, which we'll look at today and then other tools like the blade tool um, that we'll look at a little bit later. So we're gonna grab the range selection tool. Now, unlike the selection tool, when you're using the range selection tool, you're not selecting an entire clip. And in fact, it restricts the editing of entire clips a little bit when you make a selection of an entire clip just by clicking on it. Um, so what the range selection tool is aimed to do is to select a section of a clip or a selection of the timeline. So we can drag out a selection um, then we'll also see the duration of that selection. It's useful for retiming as well. Um, so if you want to make a selection of a certain area of your clip and retime it, we can do that and we'll have a look at that in a second. But we'll just look at the basics first of how we remove areas of the timeline. So if we drag across these two clips here, then we can press the, the delete key and that will remove that selection from the timeline. We can also use it on connected clips. So if we select an area of a connected clip here, we won't choose the best bit of this clip. That's pretty good for. So we'll choose the end of this clip and we can drag out and select that and delete it. And we can do the same at the beginning. And you can see that when we're using the range selection tool, it's snapping to different points of the timeline. It will also snap to the playhead as well. So if we wanna place our playhead and then we can position the range selection tool and stretch out a selection as well. We can also move the playhead and then snap it to the playhead. So we can extend that previously selected area of the clip that we were working with before. So we can stretch this out and then using backspace can delete areas of the connected clip. Now, when we're using the selection tool, we can actually make range selections as well. So if you position your playhead um, and use the I key on the keyboard to mark an endpoint, we can then position the playhead again, either by just dragging and scrubbing like I am now, or by using shortcut keys like the JKNL keys on the keyboard, um, we can mark an out point and that will select a range as well. So how can we use the range selection? Where is it useful in different ways? We'll jump back to the range selection tool to do this. So if we're mixing audio, um, for instance, if we had some great audio on the second track and we wanted to drop down the audio in areas of this bottom track, we can do that using the range selection tool. So if I drag my range selection across the beginning of this clip, I can now, I'll just increase the height of my clips there. We can now drag down, so hover over the, the audio levels line there. We can drag down and you can see that it's keyframing around that range selection. So we can do it from the beginning to an out point in the clip, or we can select a portion of the clip and use the range selection in that way. And that's a really useful way of mixing your audio. So we can do it on connected clips as well, either to raise or lower the level of audio. We're not going to get into the super detail of how we work with audio here, but when you're editing with your audio, just make sure that you're keeping an eye on the, the levels here and trying to hover everything around minus 12. And that's a, a kind of good guide to, to go for and listen to the headphone and speaker edit of the audio that you're editing. That's really important as well as you're working Final Cut Pro. So the other thing we can use um, the range selection tool for is to change the speed of sections of our clip. So if I find this little flip that he does at the end, and we're gonna come from about there and we'll turn this into a slow-mo. And once we've made that selection, we can come up to the retime tools and we can go to slow. So the retime tools, this little stopwatch in the middle, go to slow and we'll change this to 25%. And you can see now on my timeline that using the range selection tool, we've just changed a portion of the speed of that clip in the timeline. So that's a really useful way of using the range selection. So we get a nice little slow-mo playback there and we miss the end of the clip. So one thing you can't do with the, end, the range selection is you can't extend your clips um, here. So we'd have to jump back to the selection tool to then stretch out our clip here to include the rest of that selection. So you can see it's continuing the 25% speed playback there. All right, so the range selection is good for modifying audio. It's also good for selecting areas of the clip when you want to slow down a portion of the clip. Um, and it's also useful for selecting areas of the clip that you wanna remove as well. And as I mentioned before, we can use the, 
the select tool to make range selections as well. So as long as we're hovering over a particular portion of the clip, we can use it there. So we can mark an in point and an out point on the clip as well. And that range selection we can use for speed changes too. So for instance, if we wanna do a range selection here of this wave crashing, we could then slow that down on the connected clip. So a couple of different ways we can make range selections there. One other thing that does affect the range selection in Final Cut Pro 10 is the, I'm just gonna short on this clip. One other thing that does affect the range selection tool in Final Cut Pro 10 is the snapping. So if you find that you're trying to make a range selection, so if we jump to the range selection tool and you're trying to make it close to one of the edit points, it will snap to that edit point or it will snap to any edit point that's close to that. And that can sometimes be a little bit frustrating when you're wanting to scrub to that point. So as we get closer, you can see here, we can't actually make that selection because it's snapping to the edit point. So I'm gonna turn snapping off, which we do over on the right hand side here. So we can see the shortcut for snapping is N Can turn that off. And now with the range selection tool, we're not gonna to snap to any of those edit points. So we can freely modify and change the areas that we're selecting in our clip. So we've been talking about the timeline up to now, but let's have a look at range selection in the browser. So we'll come up to the browser here and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit to my browser so we can see a bit more of the clips. And essentially what we can do here is we can select multiple um, sections in one individual clip. So I'm just gonna come up here and use this clip as an example. So we've got a few lines of this clip because we've zoomed in. And if we make a range selection, so we'll grab this section here, now, if we come down to a, a new section of the clip and start to drag out again, it's gonna make a new range selection that's gonna replace that initial range selection. But if we hold down command as we're doing that, then we can make multiple range selections. So you can see I'm holding down command to make new selections in that same clip. So you can see I now have multiple selections from that same clip. So now when I drag down with those all selected, I'm dragging down multiple clips to the timeline. So if we come to a bit of space in the timeline here, we can select these individually, um, either as one clip, or we can hold down shift to select those multiple clips and drag those down to the timeline as well. So we've got a few different options, um, some options on a timeline um, for working with range selection and some options in the, the browser up here when we're initially working with our clips to work with range selection as well for selecting clips um, before we even pull them down to the timeline. And one last thing to mention here is that when you have a selection, so if I grab the range tool and just make a quick selection here, in order to remove that selection, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. One is Shift, Command and A, which is deselect all. Um, so if you go to the edit menu and you wanna remind yourself of these shortcuts, um, you can find the select all and select clip and deselect all um, options there as well. So if we come down here and press C, it will select the clip. Um, if we press X, it will select a range. So these are two different um, selections, C and X, and they'll actually behave in slightly different ways. Um, we can also use Alt and X to remove the selection, but Shift, Command and A will do the same thing. So just remembering one shortcut is the main thing. So we can see the difference here between X, which does a range selection, and C, which does a, a clip selection. So they're both slightly different options um, for working with those clips. The other thing um, that I will finally mention is that when we have a range selection, we can also use the cut and paste options here as well. So if I do Command and X, it's gonna remove that selection, that range, and then I can paste it in again at the end. So it will also do um, Command and C, or Edit Copy, and then Edit Paste will paste in that same clip there at the beginning. So we'll just grab a different range selection here so Command and C to copy, and then Command and V to paste in that selection. So we're not removing it when we're using Command and C instead of Command and X. So I hope that's been useful. There's a lot of nice, neat little tips in there for working with the range selection tool, and it's certainly a tool that I use a lot in my editing. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.